Oh, a good chaydish to everybody. Um, so chaydish shvat today. Maybe towards the end of the year we'll talk for a few minutes about today's special day. But uh, now let's turn to our Tanya Shir, and we are at the end of chapter one. And until now, the Alter Rebbe laid out for us a phenomenal insight that isn't usually discussed or might known even in classical Jewish literature from the greatest uh, Talmudic academies. And that is that the difference between an individual called a tzaddik and an, and an individual known as a bainini, from the outside, you can't tell. They both look the same, smell the same, and even act the same, and speak the same. And in a sense, almost think the same. There's only one difference. The difference is in the heart, the urge. And that he's going to discuss at length later in chapters 12, 13, 14, 15, etc. But, actually it was chapters 9 on. But the, what, what he ruled out is that to say the difference between a tzaddik and a benini is their, their outer uh, trimmings and, and behavior contradicts many, many Talmudic passages and, and otherwise as he laid out at length on the first page of chapter one. So to understand this, which of course is, is its purpose and objective is to understand man, to, to understand ourselves, because remember, the Sefer Atanya was written for us. Why? Because people like us came and saw the Alter Rebbe over the years, for 20 years, and they wanted to know how to serve God better. They wanted advice in Avedis Hashem. And they were struggling. And they came to him. And they came to him, by the way, not, on, not just, not only for those who were Chabad Hasidim. The Alter Rebbe was appointed by the Mendel of Vitebsk in a Bavrom of Kalisk, who's buried in Tferi, of course, right? The Alter Rebbe was appointed by them as the leaders for the entire area. In, 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 in the area... Uh, so, I'm sorry, I'm choppy. Any, any better now? Now it's better. Now it's better. Now it's, okay. Yeah. You'll tell me later if it's choppy, then tomorrow you won't get the background. I'll have to move uh, elsewhere. I thought that over here because of the... The, the Chabad house's strong internet, I wouldn't have that issue, I'm sorry. So anyway, anyway, the Alter Rebbe was appointed as the, as the leader for the entire region, for everyone. So in a sense, the Sefer Atanya is not just for Chabadniks, those that identify with Shita's Chabad, but anyone in that area, which was northern, later became known as northern Russia, and then ultimately southern Russia, everyone was included, okay? Only later in the 1890s, uh, 1893, 94, 95, you could say that he, the, the, Chabad, the, the Chabad movement kind of um, became its own movement outside of, of other Hasidic uh, movements in the area, something like that. So anyway, so the, yeah. Yes. The, the, what I'm saying is that the Alter Rebbe was appointed the leader for Hasidic Judaism in that area in 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 the uh, in 17 in 1777, 1783, and for 10 to 15 years, he he was the leader of the entire area for everybody, not just Chabadniks. Not just people who identified with the Sheet of Chabad, of Chochmah bin Adas. For that matter, the, the Karline and, and, and many others. Now, Karlin, I don't want to get off on a tangent, but Kar, I don't know if I should say Karliner, because Reb Shleim of Karlin wanted to move to Bashenkovitz. Reb Shleim of Karlin was, Karlin is in Lithuania. And that's where the brunt of the, the attack of the Misnag, the Machsidim, was in Lithuania. It wasn't in the Alter Rebbe's area, people don't know that. And the Alter Rebbe's area was rather quiet. It was in the Shleim and Karlina's area. 
It spread ultimately to the other, to what we call northern Russia. I think the Podolsk, Polotsk area, the, the region. There were two Geburnias, they were called Geburnias, like birthplaces. One was called Moliv, Moliv Geburnia, and Moliv Geburnia was in the northern side, where, and which, which is not where Dal Tereba was. He was there at the end of his life from 1801 when he moved to Liadi. Liadi is in the Moliv Geburnia, but Lyozhna is in the, in the uh, Podolsk, I think, uh, Geburnia. And over there wasn't, uh, the, uh, Chesidim had full reign over there. There was no issue of Mesnagdim over there. Even at the height of the, of the, 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 the Groz excommunication, etc., etc. But Reb Shleiman wanted to move over because he, he couldn't take it anymore. So he asked permission by the Balatanya, and this is a fact, this is not a, a Lubavitch is saying this. this, we have a letter, and we have it today, the letter. And in the letter it says, and you could read it too, I believe it's printed. In the letter it says that he's asking permission, why? Because he was told that Reb Mendel of Vitebsk and Reb Avram Kalisk, who were the Hasidic leaders of entire Russia before they left, and even for 10 years after they left, they wrote a letter and they said, we are now appointing Reb Shneir Zalman to take over the leadership of Hasidic Judaism in Russia. So therefore Reb Shloyma, who was a Karliner, and Karlin is very different than the Chabad approach, right? As you know, and we've discussed it over the years, the, sh the screaming and the shaking, the very, the, the tremendous emotions, his spilus, outward emotionalism, was very different. So he wanted to move into the region that was technically governed by the Alter Rebbe. And the Alter Rebbe said, you could move here, and, and, and he wanted to start his Hasidus. So the Alter Rebbe said, I have no problem mo you moving here and doing that, but, but there's three conditions. And he agreed on the two conditions. And the third condition, he said, I can't agree, and he never ended up moving. The third condition was, the shita that you have, I don't want you to teach that shita here. Because this shita in this country, for whatever reason, is a different shita in Hasidus. Now that has to be understood. What the Alter Rebbe was, the Alter Rebbe wasn't big enough to have another shita there. I mean, this this is, it's simplified. And my, uh, but Yoel Khan would talk about this at many fabrengans all nights, explaining what the Alter Rebbe meant. What is the sheet of Chabad? What's the sheet of General Hasidus? In this case, Karlin, as a representative of General Hasidus, and why the Alter Rebbe felt it wouldn't work in this region. And, you, and you, one, one more point. I was telling someone in shul here just yesterday, it seems like if not for the, the, the wild ways of the Kalisk Echsidim, this Rabbi Avram Kalisk, who later appointed the Alter Rebbe in 1770, his Hasidim understood from him that the way to serve Hashem is through belittling the Mesnagdim and what they represent. Belittling Seichel, because by, by the Litvaks, the Mesnagdim, everything was logic. It must make sense. So they would make somersaults in the street and they would go into a grocery store and ask, do you sell a pound of nails? They would belittle themselves. Belittling the, the mind. In other words, that Seichel is not where it's at. And this became very, very chaotic and wild. And, and the year was Tuf Kuf Lamed, which is 1770 in the English. If you take the letters Tuf Kuf Lamed and you reverse it, you get another Yiddish word, Tolk, T-O-L-K, but in Hebrew, Tuf Lamed Kuf. Right, instead of the year Tuf Kuf Lamed, you reverse the letters, you get Tuf Lamed Kuf, which is Tolk. It's a Yiddish word and it means there's no purpose. Sinishtok came told. There's no purpose to what you're doing. Somersaulting in the streets and making yourself stupid is not the way to, 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 to deal with a problem. But that's what they did. And this caused 
the Masnadim to go all out against Chassidim. So I said to someone, imagine if Rabbi Avram Kalaskin and his Hasidim in 1770 would have not done what they did, you wouldn't have the first Chayim, I think, of 1773 that the Vilna Goyen issued. In other words, from the Alter Reb and, and, and even later, the, 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 the other Chayims that came along the, in, the, in the 1780s and all that, it was coming all as a result of what of the Mesnagdim perceiving all Hasidim, including the Balatanya and I believe the Yitzchak of Abadichiv and the others as wild men, wild beasts. <laughs> so if, if, if it was all caused by this Hasidic talk. Why? Because the Alter Rebbe's approach was a very, very Hasidic approach with, together with rationale, as you, as you know, Hevra, from learning Tanya, from learning Hasidus. You, you see that there's a lot of... So therefore, the Mesnagdim related to it. And I'm telling you that this is true because a man like Rabbi Salavechik, Rabbi Yasha Ber Salavechik, for him, I mean, he comes from Brisk, from the Chaim of Blodin, and for him and his family to kind of embrace Chabad, Hasidus, is, is phenomenal. What do I mean phenomenal? And, there, and he said, I always said, I'm a Mesnagid from the house of Lodin, and I will never forsake that. Right? He was a brisker. What is he doing learning Torah Ayer? Look at the Torah. Tanya. The Mittler Rebbe's Chassidus. He himself said, I, I learned the Mittler Rebbe, not just the Alter Rebbe. Why? Because it fit the model of the brisker head. So if that was the case, it seems to me they would have never issued a cherem against the Balatanya. So the Balatanya ultimately is the one that, that ends up in, in, in jail with, with others, but he became kind of the paradigm of, of the problem, and with Yutas Kislev, and all because of who? Because of Avram Kalisk in 1770. Yes, Hillel. So uh, Avram Kalisk made Aliyah, right? Avram Kalisk made Aliyah in 1777. Together with Amen Lovitev. I, 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 I think tomorrow we're going with Rabbi Shapira. He's buried in, in Samaria with um, Rabbi uh, Shapira's great grandfather. Yes, yes. Go there and be Ms. Paul. Oh, oh, I've got the protest. So, so I have one question and one little anecdote related to the somersaulting. Um, the question is. Uh, in, the, in the Tanya, the, uh, the Hasidim of the Alter Rebbe are called Karliners at one point. Oh. Was that a particular era that they were called Karliners? Oh. Okay, there, I was waiting for that. First of all, it's not in the Tanya, it's in the interrogation papers. Uh, okay. You, you, won't, you won't find that in Tanya. But in the interrogation papers, which we have today, and you can read because it's been translated from Russian, it, okay. it accuses the Alter Rebbe as the Karliners. He's, the accusations against the Balatanya, and it says, you, the Karliners, dance and sing and all that. And, and again, I think there's two, there's two reasons for it. The primary reason, the way, I, the way I see it, and maybe I'm wrong, is because they were really the ones who were making the noise. And they were a large group. You know, when you just walk down the street on 16th Avenue, Borough Park, you don't hear much from our shul. And you don't hear much from uh, other shuls, but from the stone at Carlina's shuls, you can be a block or two away and you hear them clapping and singing and screaming. So the Carlina, the Carlina, you know, so what happened was that the Goyim, who, who, they know the difference between this group and that group and this rabbi, no, they punch them all into one thing, Carlina. And number two, like I said before, Hillel, because they were, they were, where was the, where was the first Cherem issued? In Vilna, right? I believe in Vilna. Yeah. And if not, and if it, if it wasn't issued in Vilna, it was issued in Shklov, but it was, it was backed by the Vilna Goin. Whose region was the, the Karlina, where it were in the, in the Lithuania region? So I assume that, that, that the, the accusation that, that the the the, the misnagdim accused they they probably use the name Carlina. You understand? That's my point. That's my point. They didn't. 
it's so it's it's a mistake. That was, never, that was never accepted in the uh, uh, in the Chabad world to uh, call our, ourselves. Uh, never, no, never, uh, never. No, no, okay. never, never, but, uh, never. The, uh, I just I wanted to say the 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 um, it was the custom of Rabbi Yochanan Twersky, the last Tal Rebbe, to do somersaults. As part of his avoda, I see, I've seen it explained. Really? Before. Interesting. And, and there's an interesting story that uh, one time at a wedding, uh, the chassan said, no, uh, I forget the Yiddish word for it, but the chassan said, no, so, tell the rabbi, do, do the, the somersault. And uh, the uh, Yochanan had a, a, a grandson of his who was offended that he spoke disrespectfully to the, to the rabbi, and he wouldn't let him do the somersault. Huh. Thank so, you. So month, months later, months later, apparently, there's a knock on his cousin's door. He tells the rabbis there, he says, I owe you this. He got the cover salt and then leave. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> there was a whole thing about, like, like uh, to overcome your ego, to uh, the, the, put what the top on the bottom, and so on. So it would fit with what you're saying about the St. Hell. Uh, well, that's it. But that... But, it's interesting that you say that. I, I never heard that before, and uh, it, it really catches me by a little surprise because the Tolna were from the Chernobler. And the Chernobler, although not Chabad, but nevertheless, they were a Russian Chassidus. But I guess Kalim was also a Russian Chassidus. No, it's interesting. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I didn't think of... of uh, well, actually, the Tolna. He was a Tolna Rebbe, you said? Yeah. Yeah, the Tolna, now I understand the story from the 1800s. The Tolna were pretty wild guys. <laughs> they, 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 yeah, the Tolna, they, took, they drank a lot of mashka. They, yeah, it seems like they had a streak of, you know, of outward spilers. Interesting you told me that. Okay, okay. yeah, Moshe. I just wanted to bring up, just interesting to speak about Carlin. So as, as, as I mentioned, Rabbi Dalton, um, Rabbi Shapira's son started a Tanya Shir, Shir and Chassidus in the shul. Yes. And he is the son-in-law of the Karlina Rebbe, Karlina Stone ah. Rebbe. Interesting. So he, one of the things he spoke about in the Shir, he devoted a lot of time, he's not done, is he gave the difference of approach between the Alta Rebbe and the Karlina Rebbe at the time. Uh, like some to what we're talking about it's just interesting I just want to share that okay um, I would have to hear carefully you know what he said is the yeah. difference or if you pick it up and you want to share it with us at another point please do so probably easier than me listening to the whole sheer although I did listen to a little bit and I really uh, enjoyed what I heard both from Rabbi Shapira and his son but I didn't hear well enough to, to pick up that but maybe I will now that you tell me that I'll be interested in hearing that myself but anyway, let's go to the text now. Page Vov. Top, lo- top line, the second, the last two words. Vegam Mideis Toivos. So the Rebbe says, in the name of the Arizal, in the name of Reb Chaim Vital says that every Yid has two Nishamas. And first he speaks about the Nefesh Abamis. And he says that the, the, that the, the ugly Mideis that come from the Nefesh Abamis are come from the Nefesh Abamis. Now he says, "Vegam midos toiv v'shebeteva kol Yisrael, even the good midos, the nice midos that are natural to all Yidden, b'toldusam from birth, biologically every Jew has this, and if not, you have to check them out whether they're indeed Jewish." Kemoy rachmanus v'goyim lechasodim, mercy rachmanus. The Gaimli Chasodim benevolent, kind. Now, this is a Gemara in Yevamis, I believe. Now, the Gemara in Yevamis says that, uh, that all Yidden have three Midas. You hear? Gerachmonis, Gemilas Chesed, and a third one called Baishonim, bashfulness. So the question is why doesn't the Alter Rebbe bring it here? And briefly, the Rebbe asked this question, and the Rebbe explained, gave the answer. The Rebbe said, the reason is because if you look into the Marsha on the Gemara in Yavamas, the Marsha says that Yidin are not bashful little, uh, what would you call the nebs. (laughs) 
Yidna Azim, Az, mighty. By nature, a Jew is mighty. Only when the Torah was given did the Torah insert a sense of humility, i.e., bashfulness, into a Jew. But since we're talking about the Teva Kol Yisrael, Ayanisim, when any Jew is born pre or after Matan Torah, when a Jew is born, he's born with with two with two midas tevas that are natural, Rachmanis, mercy, and Gemilas Chesed. But Busha was not is not from birth. It's inserted vis-a-vis the Torah. In other words, Busha, not like I said, is a neb. Busha is a great quality of being humble in a sense, you know. But that came because of Matan Torah. So when the Alter Rebbe speaks about Teva Kol Yisrael, Teva Kol Yisrael, when the Alter Rebbe talks about Teva Kol Yisrael, he's talking about the natural Midas. Okay. Kibi Yisrael, and now the question I just, is... I just, wanna, I just wanna understand, um, so that's why he leaves the third one out, by Shanim? That's right. He doesn't mention it from the Gemara? Okay. That's right. It's from the Marsha, based on the Marsha. Now that he says, so the question is, how is it that Midas Teva is come for the Nefesh Abamis? Says the Alter Rebbe, Kibi Yisrael, Nefesh Zu, because by a Jew, not by a Goy, by a Jew, this soul of the called the animal soul, the Nefesh Abamis, the Klippa that has an association to Klippa, it comes from Himi Klippa Snoigas, from what we call the translucent Klippa. It's like a cover on a light, and some light shines through. She Yeshba Gam Toiv, it has also some good. It isn't all bad. And why? The he and this Nefesh. Misoid Eitz Hadas, it comes from the esoteric idea of the tree of knowledge, which had Toivara, good and bad. So, the Alter Rebbe's technical answer to the question is, David, how is it that a Nefesh Abamis, who is so animalistic and, and desires only animalism and indulgence, can have good traits like mercy, and 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 Kibbutz Chesed as part of its makeup, its DNA. The answer is because in in th- this nefesh comes from the Klipas Noiga compared to what we're going to learn soon. Kli- Shalosh Klipas Atme is the three com- defiled Klipas, which has no good at all, and therefore there is some good there. But usually it's covered, and then you have to reveal it. I'm going to finish first the next three lines, and then explain something important. Mashen came conversely in the Fashis Umas Evdi Galilim, the souls of idol worshippers. This is the Rebbe says this is a mistake. In the original manuscript it says the Fashis Umas Haolam, the souls of all Gentiles, not just those Gentiles that worship idols. But because of the time of the printing, things were very sensitive because of the, the, the censor, the censor, and the government and the czar. So they, they cha- the printer changed it to Oiv de Galilim. But in the original, it says Umis Ha'elam in the actual Ksav uh, manuscript. Hain, the souls of non Jews, Hain Meshar Klippus, may has come from the other defiled Klippus. Shain Behem Toiv Cloud, that has no. Obvious good, apparent good, good. Meshkos of Beit Chaim, as it says in the Beit Chaim, a Kabbalah Shard Mem Tespe the Gimel. Quote: "Bechol Tivu de Avdim, all the good that they do. Ha'umis Soiv de Galilim again, a, a, a mistake. It should be Ha'umis Oilam. Le'Garmayu Avdim, they do it for themselves. Ukedisa Begemara." Al Rebbe brings a Gemara to support what it says in Eitz Chaim, so both everyone should understand clearly. It's not the Al Rebbe making the statement; it's already the Gemara making the statement, and it's Eitz Chaim. And what does it say in the Gemara? Al Posik on the verse: the Chesed leUmim Chatos, the kindness of the nations is sinful, meaning that when Goyim do when Goyim do kindness, it's considered a sin. She called Tzedak of the Chesed Shumis Oiv the Shumis Oiv the Galilim Oisim that all kindness that is done by non-Jews 
Einon Eleli Yisrael is only done for self-aggrandizement, etc. Now, maybe tomorrow we'll talk a little more about how to explain this piece of Gemara, if we needed to explain it. But Dal Tereba says here two. It makes the. This is the point. I want. I want. I want you to get the flow. Just first get the flow before we you know, creep into details. The flow is that the Nefesh Abamis comes from Klippas Noiga. The Nefesh Abamis by a Jew comes from Klippas Noiga. And Klippas Noiga has Moshe, some Toiv, and some Ra. So the bad Midah is like anger, Avram, and conceit, and all of that that he mentioned the four, from the four elements, the four, the, all those bad Midahs, they come from the Ra of Klippas Noiga. The Ra of the Nefesh Abamis. And the Midas Toivis of, of, of what's it called, they come from the Toiv Shebanoiga. So here you have to ask yourself a question that, that's obvious. Why, why are Midas Toivis Ra? Why are Teva, Ko Yisro, why are the natural good traits of Rachmanes and Gemilus Chasodim, why is, it, why is it part of the Nefesh Abamis? It should be part of the Nefesh Kis. It's good. Is there anything wrong with having mercy? On people, no. So here, Dal Tereba, you know, like in between the lines, sends a very powerful message, and this is, I think, a for us a, a very important thing. The whole theme of Tanya is to change your nature, to break your habits. Anything that's natural is not kosher. You hear that? Not anything that's natural is not healthy. It's not kosher. Why isn't it kosher? Because it contributes to a system and a, a, to a value system that builds ego and builds nefesh abamis. And ultimately it leads to your spiritual destruction. And the only way to overcome this is to break the cycle, to break the pattern, to break the habit. So even if you have yonisin, good midas, wonderful midas, but it's because you were born that way and you haven't worked on yourself to change those midas to be better. And guess what? They're not good for you. They're not what Tanya wants of you. So of course, if you're going to ask a question, is it better to have good midas that are natural or bad midas of indulgences. Of course, that's a no-brainer. Of course, it's better to have good midas that are natural. But the Sefer Atanya, remember I told you, is not a, just a book of Musr, like Mesila Sisharim, or Eishas Chochma, good ethics. The Sefer Atanya is talking about the Pneumia Sanefesh, what's going inside us, what moves us, in order for us to be clean and to be healthy, and to be holy, which is the idea of ethics, Musr, right? Mishila Shisharim talks a lot about that. You need to first be a Jew, be a Yid. Who am I? And that's what the Al Rebbe talks about in Tanya. And that's what the Baal Shem Tov is all about. It's such a mistake to think that the Baal Shem Tov is all about being a better Mida, another Mida. That's not Titus Achsidus. I'm sorry. That's not Titus Achsidus. Otherwise, you can go back to classical Ashkenazic Judaism and the Misnagdim were right. What are you coming up with? New in innovations. You want to know how to behave better? Learn Mesilas Yisharim. You want to go back 10 generations, whatever? Go back to Rabbeinu Yoyna. What do you have to, what do you have to, what do you have to put on payas and a streimel or, or a kapote or, or a beard? Whatever. whatever. A gartel. Why do you need any of this? Just be a good Jew. The answer is, I want to be a good Jew, but I want, I want to be a, a Jew. Who, who is a Jew? Oh, I don't know who a Jew is. A Jew is someone who has a bris meal and is born to a Jewish mother who had a proper Jewish conversion. Thank you very much. <coughs> we all know that. But what does it mean to be a Jew? How do I identify with it? So the Alter Rebbe says in these few words, the idea is to break the pattern. And that's why here we are learning together. You know, we're a little older already. We're not, you know, young kids, right? We have to find every day in our Avodah Hashem how we're breaking the 
convention of yesterday. And if we don't, it's Nefesh Abamis. It's not Nefesh Elukis. But I went to Davin three times a day yesterday, and I said Chitas. And I went to a Shir, and I gave Tzedakah, and I helped people. Did you go the extra mile? That's the question. Break the Teva. The previous Rebbe explains this in the words, Lashanais Teva Midaisov. There's two words, Lashanais Midis Tivim, to change your natural Midais, or Lashanais Teva Midaisov, to change the nature of every Mida. Whether the Mida is a good Mida or a bad Mida, it has to be broken, it shouldn't be Teva. And this is tough work. And this is the work of a chassid. A work of a chassid is to not accept what people say is reality. And if you follow, you listen to the Rebbe's talks, and now you see him on gem clips and everything else, you see that he lived this way. I remember one Fabrengen, he, I think it was poor in one year, uh, Hillel mentioned Vanapahu. The Rebbe said, Vanapahu, turn your hats. Everyone's wearing hats. 3,000 people in 770 wearing black hats, right? The Rebbe says, turn your hats upside down. And he himself takes his hat and puts it upside down. Vanapahu. Now that's Shtus. In the middle of a Fabrengen, a, a man like the Lubavitcher Rebbe, is sitting conducting a fabrengen and he and he makes himself silly. Yeah. It looks silly. But what he was doing was he explained we have to break our pattern. And we're used to wearing a hat only this way, so we're gonna show I'm Putin that's the day of breaking the pattern. That we can wear a hat another way. And who says you can't be a Jew wearing a hat another way? Now, mind you, I, I do want to say as a disclaimer that this can be very, very, uh, this, this isn't something that we all decide on our own, you know, because for that matter, anyone can say, I'll do this and I'll do, I'll do whatever I want. I'll come into the base medrash, you know, and dressed inappropriately, go up to the Torah, take an aliyah, and march around that way. My friend, everyone's dressed with pants and you're, you, you, whatever I'm saying, if the minigan there just is different, I'm, I'm just talking about, there are standards. We don't, you know, but I'm saying in our own Aveda, in our own Aveda, it's, it's easy to serve Hashem with Teva Midoisov of Rachmanus Mus Chasud. Like I've told you the example when people speak about Achnos Zarchim, I say, I have Achnos Zarchim. I saw Jews who had Achnos Zarchim. Jews who invited to their table every misfit in town. And invited them with simcha, and, and, and they could come, and they can go, and they can belittle the hosts, and they could smell, and they didn't say a word. That's achnos zorchim. My achnos zorchim, it's pathetic. Now, this Jew that is at the level where he can invite someone for achnos zorchim, even the misfits of the community, and it's, it, if it becomes natural for him and from his, for his wife, then he is stuck in a realm called misfits. In other words, he thrives on misfits. That also is Nefesh Abbas. You understand? It's not about the, the outside. Oh, in other words, look at, look at this guy's table. I, I, I remember this in Los Angeles. Such a per, you're right? Or even in Borough Park, I remember some, I, I know someone who invites everyone. But I know the person, and I can tell you he's not breaking his midas. He's not breaking his midas, I, 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 I can tell you that. He enjoys that, he has the money for it. it he becomes known in the com community as a house of chesed, whatever. Should, is it better to do that than not to do it, of course. But in his own Avedis Hashem, you have to ask yourself, what can I do to break the habit? Another example. Here we are teaching you, right? Uh, right. For me to teach olive base to a child is virtually impossible. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a limitation. 
It's a limitation. So, yeah, I enjoy teaching adults, and you know, I'm pretty good at it, and great. <laughs> you see, you gotta get up a little earlier, so what? <clears throat> you understand, that's what Chassidus Baal Shem Tev came along, is stop fooling yourself. Know the score. And the idea is to go further, not to become depressed and say, oh, what kind of, I'm, a, I'm not a great Jew, my avoid the stinks. And, no, that's not the kavana. The purpose is an alitzus nefesh, a happiness, a growth-oriented, a growth-oriented experience, not an experience, well, my avoida is so, you know, clumsy, big deal. That's not the purpose of what the Alter Rebbe is saying. The purpose of what the Alter Rebbe is saying is be a constant seeker. That's what he wants of us. Don't take for granted that you're already an Oivad Hashem. Because as soon as you become an Oivad Hashem, you have to go one step further. And if you don't go one step further, you're again not an Oivad Hashem. And my friends, that's why not many people become Chabadniks. Everyone wonders. Chabad is so wonderful, Chabad is so welcoming, ba 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 ba. No? Because if you knew real Chabad, you know, today we see Chabad with palm branches in the background. <laughs> and it's important, it's wonderful. The son of Florida, it's great. But if you, if you knew real Chabadniks who would stab them for four or five hours and cry their heart out and not have much to eat, and, and yet they were happy that they were Avdi Hashem. I don't mean just Chabad. They were breast liver, by the way, like this. Avdi Hashem. Then you say, wow, I have so much more to go. And that's what we have to focus on. Not the negative, I'll never get there. Like Hillel said when we started to learn Tanya, and I told him, that we'll, we'll, we'll answer his question in, in many shiurim later, in Mitzvah Hashem. But by the way, Hila, you missed a few shiurim, and I've been answering your question gradually. But anyway, anyway, Hila said, what's the point? Who's ever going to reach being a, a Bainini? What's the point of learning Tanya if I'm, not, if I'm not a Bainini? The answer is it's not about the end result, Hila. It's about the progress. What direction are you going in? And that is, is applicable every moment of our life. And it's a message that we have to share with our children and our grandchildren and our community that more important than, than the end result, you know, is get do something with your life. You don't want to be in yeshiva? Okay. What, what are you going to do with your life? Let's talk about what, how you're going to make your life a rich life. A rich life in the sense of being a creator for, for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, for world Judaism, for mankind. And everyone has, and, and, and this is something that's anyone with intelligence, and everyone has intelligence, and every person that Hashem has blessed them can understand this. And once you, you, you have these discussions, you'll see, you'll, you, you, you'll, you'll get, you'll, you'll score. Okay, Chevra. Yes, Yainison, go ahead. <clears throat> yes. No. What? No. I can't hear you. A comfort zone. The comfort zone, right. Thank you. Good words, the comfort zone. What? The comfort zone where the really cold I didn't hear. The, the comfort zone where the what? Outside of the comfort zone. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You, you're innocent. You summed it up succinctly, exactly. But that explains, David, that explains why the Alter Rebbe says the gam midas toivus, even the good midas, k'may rachmonas, k'nilus chasodim, comes from the nefesh shabamis. Hevra, have a great day. We'll see everyone tomorrow. Mitzvah Shalom. Bye-bye.